Hey everyone, this is going to be a demonstration and tutorial of Dark Forest. So let's get started. Um, first, I'll uh, talk a bit about what Dark Forest is and why it's so such a big deal. So um, before that, uh, let me talk a bit about games. So games can basically be classified into two types, uh, complete information games and incomplete information games. So Complete information games are ones in which the all information about the game is available to all the players. And in incomplete information games, this is not available to all players. So this is uh, so not exactly a correct definition, but it will do for our purposes. But um, so, for example, chess is a game in uh, which is perfect information as the only information about the game is the state of the board, which is available to all players. And um, poker is an incomplete information game as the, the hand is secret to each player. So since the blockchain is a public ledger, um, games can ideally only be of public, uh, of complete information type as every interaction you do with smart contracts is available publicly and any other player can read it and then use it uh, to play themselves. So, um, this is where Dark Forest comes in, and uh, it is the first um, multiplayer online real time strategy game. So, this is an incomplete information game, and um, how it does is it's, uh, that it uses Z uh, zero knowledge proofs and ZK SNARKs to hide information uh, of the players, and then simultaneously it um, interacts with the blockchain by keeping the information private and also verifying that the information is correct using ZPP. So uh, let me start. So this repository is the um, is the repository for Dark Forest, but it is an older version. It's the version 0 0.3. And uh, currently the available Dark Forest version is something like 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. And there's a big, a uh, big difference in both these versions. Uh, there's a lot more features in the newer one, but for uh, again for our purposes, purposes we can uh, stick to this older version. It has a very um, limited set of features, so it's easier to uh, analyze and look through. Let me start with the circuits. So basically, there are two circuits in this: uh, the initialization and the moving circuit. So when a new player joins the game, they are um, initialized to a planet called the home planet. So this planet is um, has to be kept kept secret from other players. So if other players get to know the location of this planet, they can jump to this planet and steal the resources of this newly joined player. So for this, the coordinates of this planet has to be kept secret. Um, so it does this using zero knowledge proofs. So when the game starts, a random location is generated and assigned to the player. And this coordinates are stored locally and they're not submitted to the blockchain. So instead, a hash of these coordinates are submitted to the contract. And um, the contract will store the location hashes of all the players. And then uh, these will be updated as the player moves. So to verify that the player is not spoofing the coordinates, we need a circuit which verifies that the hash they submit is the hash of the coordinates they claim to claim it to be. So this is the circuit. Um, so it takes two inputs, X and Y, which is the coordinates of the, um, of the location they're spawning in. And um, then it takes other inputs, P and R, which is not important for now. Basically these X and Y coordinates have to fall within a circle it's a, a large circle. So the, the game space is bounded. It's not infinite. So it has to fall within this. So this is what this part does. It checks that x square plus y square is less than this r square. Right. So this is the main part of the spawn circuit, which is the MIMC spawn function. And uh, it takes in the x and y coordinates as input and uh, gives out the MIMC hash as output. So since this output is public, um, the snark, snark when supported uh, and uh, sent to the contract will uh, verify and then update the game state uh, stored in the contract. 
So this is the initialization circuit. And once the player is spawned at a location, they can move on to nearby planets. And then uh, when they move to a new planet, they gain the resources present in the planet. Right. So when you think about this, the player has a current location, which is initial location X, Y, and they move to a new location X2, Y2. So um, since the, uh, both these locations are private and the only thing that will be submitted to the, uh, the smart contract is the location hashes. So um, we need to verify that the player is not spoofing the location. So what they claim the initial location is, is that there is that actual initial location. This is easy as the contract stores all the player's current location. So we can just match the um, initial location they submit and see that it's correct. And secondly, the player can only move a limited distance. So let me first open the circuit. Hmm. So the move circuit takes in uh, four inputs, X1 by one and X2 by two. Uh, the other inputs are public inputs. We don't really mind that. So the X1 by one is the initial coordinates where the player currently is and X2 by two are the the moving coordinates. So, uh, so yeah. So first, we need to check that both these coordinates lie within the boundaries of the game. So that is checked by this part. That x one square um, x two square y two square is less than r square. And then we need to check that the player is not moving too far away, and that is given by this parameter disk max. So the player can only move on um, this max units of distance. So x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square should be less than this max square. So that is what this part does. So it calculates the square of both these differences and then checks that this is less than this max square plus one. So once this is verified, the move is valid. Now we need to prove to the verifier that the location hashes we are giving them are in fact correct. And this is what this part does. It calculates the MIMC hash of both the uh, initial and the final coordinates. So these are public outputs and the verifier can verify these outputs and um, update the state of the location hashes. Right, so these are the circuits. And uh, basically this repository has three major parts, the circuits, the client and, and the uh, contracts. So the client is a front end. Uh, we don't really need to concern with this. The contracts is the next important thing. So again, um, there are a lot more features than I what I just mentioned. So I will not be going into them. But if you go to the dark forest core solidity file, um, I'll show the spawn and the move functions. Yeah. So this function initialize player is what spawns the player. So as you can see, the parameter structure is similar to what is outputted by the snark parameter output, uh, A, B, C, and input. And then it takes these, verifies the proof. There's a verifier dot solidity contract. You can check that too. That's generated by Sircom. But um, yeah, it verifies the proof, gets the location and the radius, and then checks if the player is already initialized. And then there are a few more checks and if all of them pass, the player data is stored on the contract. So the player is uh, initialized and the location hash is stored on the contract. So the next is the move function. So this again takes the A, B, C input as the parameters of the function. And um, basically from these inputs, we get the old location and the new location and etc. And then the contract verifies the proof by submitting it to the verifier. And then if it checks out, we can then check certain other conditions that uh, of the radius and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, if all of them are, uh, all of them pass, then we move the player. So by moving, I mean that the, uh, the location axis of the player are updated in the contract. Right, so this is the basic idea of what Dark Forest is. So for the last cohort, um, our assignments had some uh, dark forest implementation. And uh, for my final project, I made this minimal implementation of dark forest. 
So this is a very basic version of the original Dark Forest game. So I'll just demonstrate uh, some of the features. Right. So um, it's a, it has a pretty bad UI, but the, please bear with it. So this is the spawn function, basically. You can give it some input. And I click spawn, and it submits it to the contract, which is posted on the Harmony mainnet. And um, after confirming, So um, it took a while, maybe a um, minute more now, but um, the move was successful. And we can then also move. So this is a history of the all the transactions, and uh, we can also move the player using this. We submit some other location. So as I said, there's a there's a mine button. So what this mine button does is that. Um, so each location, uh, we don't know if, the, if a planet is there. So the mine button um, calculates the location hash of that uh, coordinate and checks if the planet is present there. So if you mine, you'll get if uh, there's a planet here, so there's a level three planet with certain amount of resources. And then you can select the amount of resources you want to collect and then just move. So this is basically it. Um, let me also show the original dark forest game so you need to um, join a wait a waitlist for this and get invited and um, so i've got an uh, i've got an invite key so i'm able to play it so this is a game it's as you can see is much much more complex and there's a lot of more features right so these are planets and you can move between planets and you have energy you have uh, artifacts Artifacts are basically NFTs, and then you have spaceships, you have a lot of other stuff. And again, you have the same mine functionality, which is this explore button, and so on. So, yeah, uh, that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. All the best for your site.